lesson is problem solving using the distributive property. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at www.mrmathblog.com. Okay, let's get started with this. Here's our, uh, our common course strand for our teachers and our essential question is how can we use the strategy draw a diagram along with the distributive property to multiply multiples of 10. So we have a couple of examples here. Here's one example. Mrs. Baker's third grade class is going to an assembly room. This room has five rows of chairs with 20 chairs in each row. If the class will fill three of those chairs, how many third graders are at the assembly? Okay, so we have, um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, break the problem down here, you guys. So what do we need to find out? Well, we need to find out how many uh, blank are at the assembly. Well, how many how many of the third graders are at the assembly? Okay, let me move that up a little bit so we have some room. Okay, so uh, what information do we need to use? Well, there are blank chairs in each row. How many chairs are each in each row? There's 20 chairs in each row. Okay, and the third graders are going to fill how many uh, rows of chairs? Okay, the third graders are going to fill three rows of chairs right there. Okay. All right, and then, uh, so how will we use this information? Well, the distributive property tells us that we can uh, blank the factor of 20 to multiply. And then let's look at this, you guys. We're going to change 3 times 20 to 3 times 10 plus, well, I know what this is going to be, 10 plus 10. So what we're going to do is break apart the factors of 20 to multiply. We're going to break it apart to 10 plus 10, okay? Or break it down or whatever. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and solve the problem here. So we're going to show it with a diagram here, and then we'll show you with uh, some numbers here in just a second. So uh, finish the shading to show three rows of 20 chairs. Okay, well, here's 10 chairs right here, and then here's 10 more chairs right here. So I'll put a 10 in right there. Okay, and then uh, 3 times 10 equals 30. So there's 30 chairs in this shaded part right here. So let's do the other 10 over there. So there's my other 10 plus 10, which is 3 times 20. Okay, so again, this is 3 right here, and this is uh, 10 going across. So 3 times 10 gives us another 30 right there. So here we have, uh, we can use the sum of the products of the smaller rectangles, uh, which is 30, to find how many third graders are at the assembly right here, okay? So we're going to do 3 times 10. Well, 3 times 10, we know this is 30. And then another 3 times 10 is going to be 30 again. So we put the 30s in right there. So when we add those together, 30 plus 30 gives us 60 right there, okay? So there are 60 third graders at the assembly right there, okay? So they're going to fill up uh, three of the rows, and there's uh, 20 kids in each row. So uh, 3 times 30 is going to make 60. All right, so explain how breaking apart the factor of 20 made finding the product easier. Well, I think it's easier to multiply by 10. So when we broke apart this 20 and made it 10 plus 10, then we did 3 times this 10 plus this plus right here, 3 times this 10 right here, and that's what this says right here. And 3 times 10 is 30, another 3 times 10 is 30, so we can add those together to get 60, okay? So it's easier... Uh, to multiply numbers by 10 because you just add a zero on those numbers and then you can add those products together, okay? Let's try another here. Scott is watching an army march in a parade. The army marches with four rows of people. Scott counts 30 people in each row. How many people are marching? Okay, so let's go ahead and read the problem. What do we need to find out? Well, we need to find out. Oops, I just moved it up right there. So what do we need to find out right there? We need to find out how many people are marching in this uh, in this parade right here. All right, and then what information are we going to use? Well, we're going to use the information that the uh, there's four rows of people, and Scott counts 30 in each row. So we're going to uh, use that. There's four rows, and there's uh, with each with 30 in each row. Okay. All right, and then, uh, so how are we going to use this information? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to break up the 30 into 10 plus 10 plus 10 and use the distributive property. And instead of multiplying 4 times 30, we're going to do 4 times 10 plus 10 plus 10. Okay, so these three 10s equal that 30 right there. All right, so here we go. Uh, so we're going to record the steps and show uh, to solve a, a 4 uh, times 30 right here. Okay, so here we have um, this is this is 10 right here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. There's 10 squares. Here's another 10 squares 
Here's another 10 square. So if we do four rows of those right there, there's four rows of 30 right there. Okay, and then we're going to break those up into uh, four rows of 10s each right there. And then we can do <clears throat> 4 times 10 is going to get me 40 right here. 4 times 10 is going to get me another 40. And then this 4 times 10 is going to get us another 40 right there. Okay, so we have 40, 40, and 40. And then so 4 times 30, when I uh, show this uh, uh, math-wise right here, we use the distributive property. 4 times 10 gets me this one right here. And then 4 times the middle 10 gets me this one. And then 4 times this 10 gets me this one right here. Okay, 4 times 10 is 40. So we're just adding 40 3 times. And 40 plus 40 plus 40 is 120. Okay, so let's answer the question. There were 120 marching in the army on that day. All right? All right, so how can we check to see if our answer is reasonable? Okay, well, one way, there's a couple ways. There's actually several ways. If we rounded the 4 to 5, we can estimate with 5 times 30. And 5 times 30 is 150. And 120 is close to 150, so that would be reasonable. Or we can re uh, round the 30 to 20 and multiply um, uh, 5 times 20. And that gets us 100. And since 30 is more than 20, our answer 120 is a reasonable answer also. Okay, Even though we're doing 4 times 20, 4 times 20 uh, gets us 100. And, uh, what did we get? 120 when we did that. So explain how using the distributive property was helpful when we found the product of 4 times 30. Well, it's easier, again, to multiply numbers by 10. So multiplying 4 times 10, 3 times, you get 40, 40, 40. And then you can add those together and you get 120, okay? All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense and take care.